Good evening. Welcome to our daily class in Rabbi Nachman on Patreon. We're holding in the third Torah of the Kuti Moran, the Torah that uh, invites us into a world we often don't get to see, the world of the source of the holy song and the source of unholy song. We learn about the conflict between the two. We learn about the idea of the kingship that is built through song. And then when one is up, the other is down. We've been learning also that the power of the song is likened to the power of prophecy, that they're coming from a similar place in the upper worlds. Now, when we talk about portals in the upper worlds, you know, you have to understand we're talking about a non-physical plane. So there is no space as we know it, and there is no time as we know it. And if you are an average person with a little bit of inspiration, you can also attach yourself to those higher places at the right time, with the right deeds. Of course, with a little blessing from Hashem never hurts. But these high mystical ideas are really within our reach if we just follow the tzaddik and what he tells us. And we also learned about judging the people to chavzchut, that when you find the good in people, you automatically elevate them and yourself and we learned about the fact that the, the chazanim, the prayer leaders, are often called foolish because the, the kingship is not in the hands of the Jewish people. And so since kingship is also connected to song and music, that the musicians are not in the position to receive their inspiration from the holy places like they normally would if the kingship of holiness was in its place. So these are concepts that you have to kind of learn over and over. Oh, maybe if you've got 30 extra years, <laughs> it's worth it to start today because they're slippery ideas. They come and they go. And we, we learn Kabbalah in order to have a template or an imprint of the world. And then the Tzadik comes along and explains to us how the energy of Hashem moves around those roadmaps of heaven. Okay. With all that introduction, let's talk about the reason, he says, why the prayer leaders are often people who are not particularly learned or particularly skilled, is because the kingship of holiness is not in our hands, and it is fallen, and therefore they don't have access to the das and the power that we're accustomed to having access to. So it's not that these, these prayer leaders are, are not on the level, it's rather that the whole world is not on the level. And so they cannot access the spiritual place that they draw the holy song, and rather they have to go through the shells of impurity to get to that power of song. Now when we talk about the shells of impurity, we can be talking about fallen desires, lust, money, everything. But we could also be talking about the, the shells of impurity also speak about our, our egos and our desire for fame and our desire for attention and all those little things we didn't get when we were kids. So, you know, it's a good idea to grow up as fast as you can uh, and, and, not, and to avoid these pitfalls. Okay. But the Rebbe tells us, But in the future... When the kingship of holiness is repaired and restored and elevated to its place, and God will be king over all the land. Now, God is king all over all the land, but not in the eyes of a lot of people. And when King David talks about that, he's talking about in the eyes of people, that the world will see that God really is king and that the, you know, the tea party is over. And then the, the, the song will rise up to the complete kingship of holiness and knowledge. And that is where the song will be drawn from. So there is a great future to holy music. Much more than there is to uh, well, <laughs> what's out there today. And 
And he, King David goes on to add, Ki melech kol aretz, the king of all the land, Elohim, his judge, zamru maskil. And this means literally the, the Elohim zamru maskil, that Elohim gam, another name of God, will, zemer is a type of song, it's like humming, it's like folk music. Like Bob Zimmerman, heard of him? Right? Elohim Zamru Maskil. That he will hum an intelligent song. A song that educates, that teaches. Ki azai keshiye Hashem lemelech al-kol aris. Because when God is king over all the land, v'yetaleh malchut dekrusha. And the kingship will rise up to holiness, azai maskil. Then there will be Intelligence. And there will be intelligence in the the prayer leaders. And then the, all the, the the rock stars will get very intelligent and very elevated, and they will have access to a very high level of song. And they will receive their music from the root in the upper worlds. And this is an aspect of the knowledge and the mental power of the kingship of holiness. So these words and these ideas are always reflecting to various levels on the tree of life. The more you know the tree of life, the more you'll be able to connect them to sit and map it out for you would probably be rather boring, I think. Because it's the kind of knowledge that you get from learning the Torah and remembering the concepts, especially in Kabbalah, where uh, little lights will go off in your head when you know what's being said. And maybe some of us don't have that experience and haven't been able to sit down for years and, and, and meditate on the Kabbalah. But it's okay. We just need to understand these basic ideas that there's kingship of holiness and unholiness. And when one goes up, one goes down. And then right now, the kingship of holiness is on the rise. And this we see in the Jewish people. We see this in the music of, the, of this generation and the previous generation where people were not happy with the old-time rock and roll anymore. It was too simple. It was too uh, v superficial, if you will, in a lot of ways. And it was not dealing with the things, the ideas of holiness. And now they are. And the kingship is going up, 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 and we're going to see more changes as we, as we are here. As we are here in Eretz Israel, we see that there's a shift in the, in the, just in the voting of the people. And just in the, the keeping of Shabbat and other mitzvot. It keeps going up and up. And the people who don't want to keep mitzvot, well, it seems like their numbers are going down. Now, is it a competition? Not really. Is it a war? God forbid. Not, not between the Jewish people. It is a conflict, but it's a conflict of ideas, a conflict of experience. And, of course, influence is a big part of it, but influence usually revolves around money. And we don't need money to win the war of Hashem. We need our heart, and we need the dedication to serve Hashem, to bring the holiness down, and then it spreads out in the right places at the right time in the minds of the people. So, you don't know what you're going to do with the next good deed that you do. But we do know that it will spread out and create more goodness. Now, the next paragraph, we're told this is an added piece of the Torah that was brought on later and now we get another verse from Tehillim Ki great above the heavens is God's kindness now the heavens since we're talking about Kabbalah usually refers to the Tiferet of Zah the middle of the middle of the tree of life the heart of the masculine form the miniature form of God and I call it miniature because it's called the short face Zer Anpin and that corresponds to the heart of man. But it tells us that God's kindness is higher than that. Higher than <coughs> his than the heavens. That there's this level of heaven, then there's a higher level called his kindness. And Shemaim, who 
Bechinat Kol. And this idea is the idea of voice. That there is a voice that empowers reality below it. That's the Chastecha Me'al HaShamayim. In other words, think of it like chesed, the power of loving kindness, is pumping light into the voice of holiness. And people will receive it. And this is the idea of kol, bechinat shemayim hishmata kolecha. From the heavens you made heard your voice. See, God can turn the switch on and off his voice anytime he wants. Ki ha'idea ha'chesed, but through his kindness... Which we learned earlier in the Torah is the thread of kindness that wraps around a person who learns Torah at night and who gets up to pray before the sun. This is drawn to a person by learning Torah at night. And by learning Torah at night, we also fix the voice of holiness. And that is the greatness above the heavens is God's kindness. So, you know, there really is a lot to, to, uh, to accomplish here. And if I was a, a singer of music and a musician, I would want to spend every day with this Torah, trying to fulfill it. Because it's going to improve every aspect of your musical ability. Well, now he goes back to a concept we had earlier also, the two birds of holiness, because their prophecy is drawn. This is the building of what we call the kingship of holiness. Now we're talking about building a spiritual building, not a physical building. The physical buildings will come. They're build, being built as we speak. Of course, we're looking for one particular building, the Beit HaMikdash. But nonetheless, this building of the kingship is building of this power of being king. The ability to receive and to give. The ability to listen and to speak. The ability to distribute and to withhold. The ability to wage war and to call for peace. Diplomacy and its opposite. This is part of the repertoire that the king needs. Okay, Hamadat Melech. Therefore, placing the placing of the king, Haya Alpi Nevuah. The 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 appointing really Hamadat means not just simply placing, but the standing up of a king. The appointing of a king was only through the prophet. It was not done by <laughs> any constituency or any uh, you know voters' college or any senate. It was done by a prophet. Because all the kings of the house of David were appointed by prophecy. And where does the prophecy come from? It comes from between those two little birds on the cover of the Ark of the Covenant. And this is the idea of these two birds. That the voice emanates from between the two of them. Which really are the two sides of the heart. And the two hands. And from there, they build the kingship below. So the king has to have a voice, a voice that mimics and parallels the power of holiness, and he brings holiness into the world through this very system of the Shtet Sipurin de Kedusha. And so, you know, it might sound strange, but you have this ability. You have this ability by right living, by Torah living, and by singing. And singing with all your heart. And by attaching to the tzaddikim. And by finding the good points in people. All of those things will, will draw you closer to your goal.
Okay. Well, we've come to the last paragraph of this Torah. And after the the rising, they brought him. And we said this was from from before or from behind the minikot, which we said are Netzach and Hod. The two powers of the two legs and the soul that draw that draw holiness from above to below. That's the basic idea. Your legs are two spiritual pumps that draw power from the mind through the face and down to the heart. And that's they're called Netzach and Hod, victory and splendor. And they correspond to the right and left thigh. That is to say, David himself. David had this power to elevate song. That was sung by a person who's not holy. He says here, not kosher. And he could hear the unkosher song, and bring it back to holiness. And that is because after, from, from the place of prophecy, he was drawing his power. And even the, the power the song, of song that comes from behind the holiness, which we call the other side. From behind the Netzach and Hod, Ki Anegina de Kedusha, Ukedusha, U Mechar Nevi'im Yimkin. Repeats the idea again. That it's coming from this power behind the prophets. And the, the song that's coming from the not holy place is coming from this other side. Behind the holiness. So David again had this power to elevate and fix this fallen song and the fallen singers. And this is how the kingship of holiness is elevated. And this, the end of the Pasuk is to shepherd Yaakov. The shepherd is the one who plays that music. He keeps those sheep in line. And I guess that's a, a parallel metaphor for a person who can take the kingship and guide the people. Ki And this is how David merited to kingship. So this is a fascinating look at the way holiness and music are interrelated in their expression and how one is elevated, the other goes with it. And that's essentially what David Amelech did. He went from being a shepherd boy you know, playing his his flute with the with the sheep and the fields right out here in, in Yehuda, and eventually he became the hero and the warrior who killed Goliath, and then he became the son-in-law of the king, and eventually he became the king. And that process is the re-elevation of the kingship of holiness. So I know people that went out to shepherd sheep because they wanted to fulfill these teachings. It was a, it was a sweet idea. A little bit innocent, perhaps. But they went out and bought sheep and shepherded them around the hills. But I'm not sure how good they were singers <laughs> or flute players. But the, the idea is, though, very clear. And, you know, that many, all the great leaders of the Jewish people were shepherds at a certain point in their careers. And apparently there's something to it. So we'll be back tomorrow with our next Torah and Rabbi Nachman, the fourth Torah, Dalit. And, and he speaks to us about being our God who took us out of Egypt from the house of servitude. So, you know, we want to get out of servitude. That was Pesach. And now we're going to receive the Torah again, which will push us, well, further down the road, away from servitude, God willing. So we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow evening. All the best to all of you. And we should have a great time. Today's the 48th day of the Omer, and we're looking forward to the Hag. Hashubu'od coming soon. In a